to thank FOSDEM uh, because it's a great place for sharing. And I think as we are doing technologies for sharing, it's a good idea today to do sharing. So we'll talk about something called Forban. Uh, you can pronounce it with a French accent. Sorry for my French accent. Um, but Forban is uh, a play word. Between Forban like the pirates, but Forban like Forban, meaning banning uh, on the internet. And I will explain all the background of the project um, in the 15 minutes I have. Uh, basically because the project is a, um, came out from, out some, from, from some frustration I had. So um, the first thing that is very important, um, it's right now the legal framework, so the copyright law and so on, is basically limiting your ability to share information. And to share with your neighbor or your friends is becoming very complex and very difficult. And that's for us a very key point why we uh, develop for boys. We want something that we can share with friend and, and neighbor uh, without too much difficulty. Another problem that we have seen is uh, basically editors, so the, the one publishing books or publisher, are basically trying to kill all the conviviality in the society. So whatever you try to do for exchanging books and so on, they try to limit your capa capability of exchanging books. And worse, uh, and I think Eben Moglen took it, the talk about it um, this morning, is the internet start to be controlled. So more and more uh, laws are limiting your behavior on the internet. So for example, if you start to share on the internet, you, know, you receive letter, and even worse, you get uh, blocked from the internet. And I wanted to take the, the example of the books, because books are really a part of our society. Uh, we, for my personal point of view, I can't live uh, without books. Uh, we, you can learn from it, you can learn science, you can learn engineering, you can escape uh, from the world. It's a great thing. The thing is, books start to be a bit useless with those uh, bloody DRM, um, kind of digital restriction management tools, where uh, basically the editor are pushing the limits and try to avoid all the nice functionality we had with physical books and uh, limit uh, people buying books and limit their ability to share books. So that, that's why we were wondering, because Currently, with physical book, it's very easy to go to a, a traditional um, library to get a book, to rent a book, to, to lend a book. It's very easy. Now, with digital books, is it easy? Is it more difficult? It starts to be very strange because basically the library is not able anymore to share books. So I think we have to counterbalance this, that we have to maybe play the role of the librarians um, liber uh, and uh, transport by yourself all your books. And that was the crazy idea we had. So basically, the Forban started as a discussion, uh, you know, one of those uh, crazy discussions uh, between geeks. Uh, and the major question we had were the following. The first one was, uh, can we do file sharing without the internet? And I think today it's very easy. Computers are everywhere. Each phone is basically a full-blown computer. So sharing starts to be very easy. Setting up a wireless network, so a personal area network is very easy. Another thing that we discover it's basically more easy to exchange or share books with strangers. Why? But you go to Usenet or you start your peer-to-peer -peer client and you start to look for books. But basically the, the guys who are sharing books or girls who are sharing the books with you are basically strangers. Why is it not easier with your friend? Another thing we were wondering, if, if we start a new project, uh, we want to start something very small and simple and we don't want to start a, by a very complex project. Another thing we had in mind is security. Do we, do we really care about security when we do file sharing? And it's something I really should not say about it because I'm working in security. Uh, we completely forget about security because it's for us uh, a pain in the ass to handle and manage. So that's why we started to work on this project. And we wanted to make a, a very simple protocol when we have been very uh, kind of proximity. So that means when you are close to a friend, how do you do sharing? Right now, we, when you are in a, in a bookshelf or next to a bookshelf, you just share with your friends which kind of book you have. So you look at book cover and you exchange books. It's very straightforward. So that's, that's, that means the technology needs to be as simple. So that's why we created Formon. 
with some basic objective and some basic technical recommendations. Uh, first, we wanted to basically re rely on the HTTP protocol uh, without going into very complex stuff. Uh, we just had to add those minimal extensions to do the announce, but basically it's full-blown HTTP. So you can use any uh, HTTP client out there to access some forbound nodes. Something else that we didn't care too much in the initial prototype is bandwidth optimizations and so on. So that means uh, if you have a formal node, they will use the, all the bandwidth and they will do best effort. So for the first version, it might be sometimes unstable, but it's quite interesting to, uh, for designing the protocol. Something that we discussed too is uh, we wanted to have something that is really independent from files, format, and file structure used. We want something that people are just putting file and it's automatically replicated. Something that is quite important, a lot of networks are basically unstable. That means they are going up and down very often. Uh, wireless networks are used to be unstable. Um, maybe you see here at FOSDEM. Um, it's very easy if you are not close away, uh, very close to the access point. You might be uh, uh, not have wireless access, so it's basically unstable. So you have to take into consideration such kind of thing. And the idea is basically to have a a prototype that can be re-implemented yeah, and even remixes. And, and that's, that's very important for us. It's, very an ex it's an early experiment. So don't expect everything to work perfectly. But basically we wanted to have really a software, so we just implemented the idea. And afterwards we hope that other people will create other versions and other ideas based on this idea. So as always I say, it's, I, you can't blame us for what we are doing, but we are doing something. So if you see a problem, so if you want to improve the protocol, it's fine, it's great. But show us the code. So, the core concept between Forban is a uh, different mode of operations, but the main mode is called the opportunistic mode. What is all about? Uh, the opportunistic mode is, really as a, the, the name stands, it's an opportunist. So that means he's sharing everything and he's copying everything. In the academic literature, you can see it as a well-known protocol called epidemic protocol or gossip protocol. So that's basically copying everything. <coughs> there is another mode, shared mode, where you can share uh, everything. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and you have <coughs> another mode, <coughs> another mode. <coughs> Great. And you have another mode where you can <coughs> basically get any file you want. So all it looks like, it's very easy. What do you see? It's all the nodes available on the networks. Here you see one called <coughs> Elliptic. And you see another one called Clarisse McLeans. <coughs> Each node has uh, <coughs> files that are basically books or whatever you want to share. They are seen uh, IPv4 and IPv6. Like you can see basically the files missing between a lot. So this one is Clarice McLean's, and <coughs> she's missing 567 files. That's how it works on the interface. Obviously, we are not use, uh, user interface designer, but the idea is <coughs> every node see each other. So to go maybe deeper into the systems, it's how it works. It's basically you are in a wireless network. You have two forbound nodes. One is using the opportunist, opportunistic mode, that's the default mode. And one is using the shared mode, where it's basically sharing files but without getting the files. So, how does it work? <coughs> that's very easy. The opportunistic mode is getting all the files from the shared one and stacking all the files. So, that's basically a simple fetch and merge all the files. <coughs> Imagine a third node is coming into the wireless, so basically they're entering the wireless networks. You see you have um, still the opportunistic ones, you have the shared mode one, and you have a node without any files. This one is going into the network and it will basically do the same thing as the previous one. You will see the two nodes, get all the content, and that's it. So that means each node is basically replicating all the content. 
That's very brute force, but it works. So as you see, no, <coughs> the third node has all the files. It works even with a web browser. If you know where the uh, forbon is, you can get and browse any directory you want. Or you browse it, it's very straightforward. You basically go to the interface, and you have here a small button, browse, and you can browse any files. So that means any web browser should work out of the box. How does it work? So the technical people over here. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we have an announce protocol to just, just do the announce. I'm pretty sure I will get questions about this. Why don't we use rendezvous, DNSSD, and so on? Uh, it's basically because we wanted one single message containing all the information. So that means if the index is new, the source IP, and so on. Uh, doing this with uh, DNSSD or SSDP or any of those protocols, it's very complex. So that's basically a flooding protocol which just regularly flooding the network with a U UDP frame in V4 and V6. Each forborn is known by a, a unique ID. This unique ID is randomly generated. It's flooding the networks. And each forborn is maintaining a list of all the ones he discovered. That's basically it. And afterwards, uh, he knows how to get the index files. So he's basically using the HTTP protocol to get each file. So how does it all the format looks like? The format is basically no binary format. It's a full text format. So you have a source interface. That's basically where the announce is coming from. And the destination, you see we are using broadcast or uh, multicast link, link, link local addresses for the announce. What's inside? Basically a header, it's called Forban, and you have a key value entry with the name of the Forban, the unique ID, and the hash mac. And the hash mac is basically the index uh, hash of this Forban. If the index uh, changes, it will be changed. Right now, the hash mac is hard-coded to uh, one key, but it can be elaborated after to have private Forban with a specific network. Why we are doing this? It's basically a simple protocol. So that means you can have in one liner using TCP dump or Wireshark, whatever you want. So that means doing scripting around the protocol is very easy. Because what you can do is you can filter on, um, listen on any interface, get the payload, filter on the default port that you are using is 12555, uh, and look for the beginning of the UDP frame for Forbon. That's, that's it. And like that, you have, what you have is a one-liner containing the announce. Easy. Afterwards, when you know how to reach a Forbon, you can get the index. Or you get the index, you basically use the source IP addresses from the announce, use the default destination port that you get, too, and you download the index. What is the index? It's, it can be less, uh, more uh, simple than that. It's basically a file pass with a file name and the size of the files. That's it. What is the index? It's basically a text file containing recursively all the files available in the shared directory. The total size and everyone can fetch this file, and the file is uh, a text file without any limitations. It's a raw file, so it's not UTF encoded whatsoever, it's depending on what each node is doing. So that might be a problem in some cases. How to get a file? Basically the same stuff. You get the files, it's a get method. You still use the information that you get from the source interface. You encode the file name from the index as a base64 URL safe encoder, and that's it, and you get the files. From the web interface, it works from the same way. Uh, you just have a content dispositions to ma uh, make everyone happy. How works the uh, opportunistic mode? This one is very simple too. It's basically comparing all the index, doing a diff of each index, and merging into a single file and downloading the files that are missing. That's basically it. Nothing very complex. Uh, you can build filters to extract some files, but the algorithm is not that much complex. Uh, if you look at the code, I think this part is around uh, 25 lines of Python. So nothing else. So if you can do it in, you want to do it in Bash, Lua, or your favorite language, or your favorite scripting language, you can do it. That's pretty straightforward. 
There is something that's quite interesting that I think worth to mention is basically, as you see, the index is relying on file name. We don't look at the hash of the files. So that means, and that was a good question from TS, um, if you have files with basically the same file name, always you will keep only the largest file, and that's it. So, do you want to share at first them? So I have my library with me. I have around four gig of books. And that's it. So you have the information. 